Hi, BookTube. It's Gina. Happy Friday. Hope you are doing well. Do you have any fun plans for the weekend? I don't really have anything going on right now. We're having some beautiful sunny weather. Hopefully it sticks around. And if it does, oh, who am I kidding? I'll probably still be sitting around the house reading. But I may do some book shopping. We'll see. Um, I recently did do some book shopping online. I bought some used books that I wanted to share with you. I have been on a perpetual quest to find cozy authors. And since my beloved Rosamond Pilcher has passed away and is sadly not writing any more books, I'm always sort of on the hunt looking for books that are written in that sort of same style. And someone recommended to me um, in a comment recently to try Looking Forward by Marsha Willett. And I, I bought this book um, at Thrift Books. It's used, it's in fairly decent shape. And it's actually got a little line on the bottom that says, in the best-selling tradition of Rosamond Pilcher. But when I was on Thrift Books looking for this, a few other things popped up in that, you know, that bar that always shows up at the bottom with additional recommendations. And there were a whole bunch of books that I realized are, I'm sure it's a marketing ploy, but they are marketed as Rosamond Pilcher's Bookshelf. This one is A Desirable Residence by Madeline Wickham. And so this kind of started me down a little rabbit hole of thinking, gosh, there's probably some more books along these lines that I might enjoy. So I started throwing things in my cart. Um, I bought this one. And I don't know anything about these books. I'll let you know when I read them what I think. This one's fairly short. Um, so we'll see how that goes. Um, I also bought, also from Rosamond Pilcher's bookshelf, Charmed Circle by Barbara Whitnell. And, you know, I'm not, I'm, I don't have super high hopes that these are going to be spectacular, but I thought, gosh, for a few bucks, it's worth a try to see what I think about some authors that I haven't um, tried before. Um, so that was the next one. And then the next two I bought are same, same situation. It is A Price for Everything by Mary Sheepshanks and Meeting Lily by Sarah Woodhouse. And the reason that I bring these two up together is because these are both hardbacks, which I don't really care about. I just am primarily buying these to read and to see if I like them. If I do, I might look for some additional uh, books by the authors, etc. However, when I received these, and I'm sure you guys have had these problems before, these two are both library editions. And I get really annoyed when I've been talking to a few people um, about this recently. I get really annoyed when people selling books do not actually tell you that they're a library edition. For these, I'm not super worried about it because I'm not going to probably collect these. I don't think this is one I'm going to keep and save forever, but it might be. And I do, I don't like the sticker on the outside of these. Now, the interesting thing is on this one, this was also a library copy. Um, however, with this one, I was able to pull off that Mylar cover because it was just taped, the, the cover was just taped to itself. So I was able to pull that off and then I was able to remove the stickers uh, from this one and it actually turned out pretty good. But on this one, the Mylar cover is not taped to itself. It is taped, it's glued down to the book. And so I don't want to 
take the cover off to pull off that sticker because I don't want to tear the paper in the book. So it's a conundrum, a conundrum. I just find it really annoying when, first of all, they don't tell you what the actual book looks like when you're buying it on um, one of those used book sites. And then also when, just when libraries in general glue the covers down to the books. Because I could do a lot with this one. I could, rep I could remove that cover pretty easily. I could remove that Mylar cover, but I don't want to damage the whole book. The other interesting thing about this is that um, I recently bought some of this, which was also recommended by one of you. It's called um, Undo Remover. And this is a, um, it's, it's quite toxic, so it's, I, I have to be really careful. But it was kind of fun because on these library books, I thought, ooh, I'm gonna try this new remover and see how it works. And interestingly, there was actually a paper sticker right here. And this is, of course, a piece of paper. I used that undo on that and the, the sticker came right up, which is kind of interesting. Um, I did also use it on the outside. The sticker that was right here was of a different type and did not want to come off. I used a little bit too much of that chemical, I think, because I, I wrecked the bottom of this a little bit. But I thought this would be a fun way to actually test out that new product and see how it worked. And surprisingly, it worked fairly well um, on this. So I might kind of keep giving that a try, but I'll never use it on anything that is important to me or valuable because it's not worth risking. Um, and then lastly, the last book that I wanted to show you, I got a little bit off topic there because I got <laughs> down the rabbit hole of condition and quality of used books on thrift books, is I bought this signed copy of Mrs. Pringle by Miss Reed. And I was very excited about this when I saw it. It was only $13. It was a signed copy, but once again, it did not state in the description that there's a gigantic sticker right over Mrs. Pringle's head. And I've had some recommendations to try the warm blow dryer method to peel this off. Um, there's a chance that this might work too because it didn't appear to damage the or be oily on the on the paper. However, this book was was printed in 1989, and this sticker I'm sure has been on there since then, and it, it seems pretty well attached. And I'm. I'm a little bit leery of even blow drying it and trying to peel it up just because I'd rather, I think, just have the, the sticker on there than have bits of sticker pulled up and messy. I don't know. I don't know. What do you guys think? I'm so on the fence. I think for now, I'm just going to leave it as is because what is that now? Over 30 years um, that that sticker has been adhered to this cover. So I don't feel very optimistic that I'll be able to get it off nicely. I don't know. I'm on the fence. What do you guys think? Um, it was not an expensive book. I think I did already say it was only $13 plus shipping. So it, it's not it's not a terrible investment, but it is. It is signed. It's my first misread signed book. And so it's kind of special. Um, so I don't know. I'm totally on the fence about if I should attempt to peel it off or just leave it. What do you guys think? Do you have any advice? I'd love to hear it down below. And I will talk to you next time. Bye.